This is the guts of a Lasco uh, My Heat Model 101 200 watt um, electric heater that I got today just for low power um, heating applications because normally heaters are small and very hard to find. And this is just a bit of a guts video slash safety check thing just to make sure that there's nothing horrible inside it. Because I've seen some absolute horror stories and some Chinese stuff before. And again, don't attempt this at home. Uh, exposed mains, blah blah blah. And of course also this thing doesn't have... It uses uh, Torx screws instead of your normal uh, Phillips or Posi drive that a lot of the stuff uses. But I, being me and thus weird, have a Torx screwdriver that fits. Um, actually, that's a security Torx, even though these are not security Torx screws. Um, but anyways, um, it's uh, marked as being a ceramic heater, which is just a bunch of resistive elements with um, metal fins, I'm guessing of some kind of an aluminum alloy, between them, uh, mounted in a uh, what appears to be some kind of a high-temperature plastic frame. Um, these stupid crimp-on things, which I tend to not like, but that's commonly used in a lot of this stuff. And one interesting thing is that this thing uses one of these uh, fairly typical um, brushless um, uh, muffin fans. Um, but one interesting thing is that a lot of these things normally employ a tap on the heating on the heat on the heating element that produces about say 12 volts AC or something, and then they just put a rectifier, and they may or may not put. Uh, ripple suppression capacitor across that, but I guess because these um, electronically commutated ones don't like the um, jankiness of that of the waveform you get from that, combined with the fact that this heating element doesn't have any taps. One very interesting thing is that there's actually a little switching power supply to run the fan that probably just outputs 5 volts or 12 volts or something, judging by the red hot wire for the fan. Or, no, that, that doesn't really mean much. But, um, judging by the 25 volt rating of the output capacitors, that's going to be, um, probably a 12 volt fan. But it's actually a little tiny switching supply. It's the first time I've ever seen one of these. Not that I've took many of these things apart before, but most of the ones that I have use, uh, mains motors, but they probably couldn't get a mains muffin fan for cheap enough this small, so it's just cheaper to use a DC fan and a little switcher. And, um, Again, nothing really complicated, nothing really screamingly horrible. It does have these um, Hua Hong branded obscure uh, knockoff caps. Um, input production fuse and varistor, which is a good thing to see. A little bit of a dinky fuse. Might be okay for, probably okay enough in this application for 120 volts. Um, obviously, in 240, that would not be breaking in clearance, would be crap. But for 120 volts, it looks okay ish, knock on wood. Um, switching device, er, th this has one of these monolithic um, switcher drive chips um, with a built in switching device, so there's no external FET. Um, given that this is an extremely low power supply, um, low power um, power supply, that's not really needed, so it can just get away with one of these built in chip devices. Uh, it's a THX202H. Couldn't find any information on it in the cursory search that I did, but that's going to be just a fairly standard um, no name Chinese uh, switching chip. Opto, and uh, what well, looks, at least at first glance, like a Y cap, which is decent. <coughs> and things like Opto, and um, Opto is just part of the feedback path. And it is full wave bridge rectified by a little SMD bridge on the back. Um, and there's a couple of uh, SMD uh, resistors and capacitors on the back, but nothing really much. All the major power stuff is uh, through-hole, as is still fairly common. <coughs> there's that dial, which is probably just part of the control circuit. I think that's probably... One in 4,000. I don't know if it'd be... Probably might get okay enough performance at extremely low power. That's just going to run off of a feedback winding, and that's just what powers this device in operation. As part of the startup circuit, one of the pins on these is either is going to uh, go through uh, some kind of a current limiting device, usually an external resistor, internal resistor, or internal current limiting using some kind of an active uh, current lim current limiting circuit. That just charges up the uh, supply bus, which 
that cap is for until this thing is capable of running on its own. Um, Connor Wolf has done some uh, videos of a teardown of a really cheap uh, no-name Chinese, um, I think it was either a 5-volt or a 12-volt supply, and he goes more into how these things work. Then, uh, you, that's a TL431, just uses a different thing, but yeah, that's going to be part of the regulation. And to eat something 4 through 1, but that's just going to be an LM4 through 1 or a TL4 through 1. It's fairly co common, basically. Um, it's marketed as being kind of a controlled Zener type uh, device. Just an operational amplifier and a patch transistor and a couple of other little gubbins. Um, inductor, which is, I think, um, for noise suppression, which is fairly good to see, actually, in obscure crap like this, something you normally see. Single rectifier, which because this is going to be a um, a single end drive, um, is uh, you wouldn't really need, or full wave rectification would be a waste. So yeah, that's um, and there's output caps. So yeah, fairly interesting to see and halfway decent power supply by the looks of it, guys. Cut slots cutting it for isolation and everything. There's a slot label stuck across the um, gap, which is generally not that good. Just in the event that it chars and provides a path. But the thing is, is that the, the fan, because the whole casing of the thing is plastic, um, the fan is still completely electrically isolated. So, hmm, not too bad. It's certainly somewhat unusual. But yeah, it's a little tiny heater, and well, at least initial looks, it's okay for a cheap Chinese trinket. And it's for you assemble the bloody thing.